Have you been scrolling through many, many, many film podcasts thinking there's far too many of these? Or have you been thinking there's something missing? There's something we're not quite getting. A waffler from Northern England reviewing films, for example. Welcome to oh, Review It Yourself. No politics, no pandering, no point. You, yeah. You're here, but we can't see you, fortunately. Okay, hold on. This is... Okay, got it. Why is it That's mine? fine. We can hear you. That's, that's no. enough. Just just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Close this. Yeah, here we go. Where's my video? I know. Fuck. I did my hair and everything. I said this. I said you'd do this. <laughs> ah, there we are. Oh, shit. There, there, there we are. Just one second. I'm sending a tweet. It's really important. Is it? Is yeah. it Canuck? Canucks. Canuck. Canucks. Is it not a hashtag with Canuck and Canucks? Hold on a sec. What were you guys? Just carry on. Give me like two seconds. We we're just talking about you. I was I was literally saying oh, please, yeah, what he does. What carry he, on. No, I was <laughs> saying what he does is he comes on, Sean, and then you can't see either his video, we can't hear him. And then lo and behold, can you guys hear me? Video's not working. Oh, there he is. So uh <laughs> yeah, thanks for proving me right there, Dan. You're welcome. Um and I am done there we go oh sorry sean da- um, dan's a, like a massive deal on twitter because he, oh, he's got yeah. into this hockey stuff and this whole jersey stuff these all these videos he's like a huge deal now okay uh, guys uh, like... hey let's get the party started well, what are we oh, talking yeah. about no come on dan that's <laughs> that's way too much energy dan, I, know, I know i know we're british and i don't want to hold up to a stereotype but it's too much for us like ben's ill i've been on a stag do all weekend uh it's, guys it's too much it's <laughs> it's 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 Sunday morning for me, man. I I got my coffee. I just finished another video and posted it. Hopefully, it will blow up like uh, well, oh like nothing Jesus. has. So what's this part four? No, no, this has it. Oh, Ben, I got to be honest with you, man. My next video, I don't like to toot my own horn, but it's my it's going to. my it's my masterpiece. I am so proud of it. I can't wait to release it. But I need the Canuck season to end before I do because it's sort right. of tied in with failure so did you, anyways um, did you get someone else else to help you on this one yeah yeah my uh my kid uh my kid took on the role of the jersey so we were able to do a lot more interesting things so it's fun right, right. <laughs> okay hey so uh how do we want to start this off sean what do you want to do this is your show I, I I feel it rapidly. It's not becoming mine, but that's fine. Oh no, sorry, sorry, Sean. He he does this. He he comes on people's shows and just because he loves the sound of his own voice, he just tries to take over. <laughs> you, you'll get you'll get used to it. You get used. To it. Well, no, I you mean, don't get used to it. Actually, you don't get used to it. Tolerable becomes more tolerable. To be fair, oh, though, oh, yeah. we're, we're all podcasters. We oh, well, I don't love the sound of my own voice. It tends to put me to sleep, but uh, literally to sleep. But uh, no, well, welcome, Dan. Not usually how I welcome my guest, <laughs> but uh, if anyone's listening, welcome to oh, review it yourself. Uh, I'm not alone, as per usual, really. Um, <laughs> I'm here with Ben from Film Floggers and the Sopranos Redefined podcast, which he does with my other guest, Dan Mackles, who also does a podcast called You Gotta See This. And ooh, we're here ooh, today. T- touchy, touchy subject there, Sean. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, I, I, uh, this is actually how Ben and I met was because he started Film Floggers roughly, I think, the same time as I started my other podcast, You Gotta See This. And uh, unfortunately, my, uh, my, my co-host, she's just so busy and it hasn't really led to an opportunity for us to sit down and record like we used to. So we're sort of on a, uh, an extended hiatus because she actually works in the film industry. So she's taken up her time working on the movies while Ben and I are just sitting around talking about them, much like Dan, yourself. Dan, yeah, he got Dan got booted off it because he's useless. <laughs> How's the heart and soul of that show? <laughs> Good stuff. Um, I am here. What we're here. Oh yeah, I've done it. I've said we're here to review uh, Casino Royale, the two thousand and six soft reboot of Bond, uh, directed by Martin Campbell, who directed Goldeneye, great film, um, and he continues his run of brilliant Bond films. So, first question we're going to kick off with: um, d- Did you think the change was needed um, in terms of a soft reboot for the Bond franchise? If your answer is anything other than hell yes, after Die Another Day. The fiasco that was. I'd be surprised, but what do you guys think? You want to take this first, Ben? Uh, in short, yes, yes. <laughs> after the after the CGI on show oh. in Die Another Day, 
when he's what's he doing? He's on a he's going along a wave, isn't he, or something? Yeah. So the ice is breaking. It's well, I, I say this often, but it's it's just some of the worst CGI you're ever going to see. It's it's so offensive. Um. So after that scene alone, yeah, yeah. Look, I think Pierce Brosnan did a good job. I think um. I mean, obviously, Goldeneye was was itself was a bit of a reboot, wasn't it, as well for the Bond franchise. So I think Pierce, you know, I think he did, I think he did some. I think the first two bonds that you did were pretty good. And then they started to maybe tail off a little bit. But uh, yeah, after Die Another Day and Madonna and all that rubbish. Yeah, yeah I was I was ready for some bond, for some new bond. Well, it was also tough, right? Because I'll, I'll admit um, I, I wasn't uh, the biggest bond guy. I, I did have a roommate whose uh, father was English and we had the vhs collection of all the sean connery bonds i remember watching those and i i I enjoyed them right they were fun um i think they were always sort of uh tongue-in-cheek kind of campy-ish um again like yourself i liked the pierce brosnan goldeneye and a follow-up uh which i can't remember what it was tomorrow never dies die another day there we go there's a die in there somewhere but uh i i think (laughs) those brosnan ones they, they really went off the rails but having come out in the 90s you take a look at a lot of the action movies that were around back then they were the kind of over the top things like face off like the rock um and unfortunately the the bond series took it a little bit too far and un- and another unfortunate thing i think the last one with brosnan came out in 2002 the exact same year the born identity came out and then you've got these two completely contrasting styles of a spy film and we were sort of gearing away from the the silliness and more towards a, a, a realism feel for these kind of movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can keep going. Do you guys want me to keep going? Like, like... <laughs> what, what did you think of the CGI in that in the uh, Die Another Day? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be honest with. Is that the one with the guy with uh, diamonds in his face? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I that, that nonsense. I, I, I got to be honest with you. I watched the uh, the opening set, and uh, after that, I was kind of I was kind of zoned out. Maybe like reading a magazine, thinking about you know what it would be like to have a podcast one day. Even before <laughs> we knew what a podcast was, uh, that was probably where my focus was when yeah, that movie you're started. Already dreaming of meeting me, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's dreams. Dreams can you're gonna, come you're true. Gonna, oh, you're gonna get me going again. Come on. <laughs> well, Sean, I mean, what's your history with Bond? Where where where, where do you sit with him? Pre Casino Royale. Oh uh, well, I'm English, so I tend to love Bond, but I mean it's not a given. But Connery, brilliant, hated the George Lazenby me one. Everybody seems to have a soft spot for Honor Majesty's Secret Service. I can't stand it. His voice is dubbed for most of the film. It's a shocker. It's a shocker. But it is, people it love is it. lame, isn't it? That one. People it love it. Lame. Yeah, people yeah, love it. I don't know why. Like the latest one, No Time to Die, which I hate, and you can hear me rant about that one in a previous episode. It's just, it's just awful. I did all these homages back to On Her Majesty's Secret Service. We've got all the time in the world, not this crap. And I just, I was just like, oh, I can't be doing with this. Roger Moore films, you know, um, I'm going to ignore Diamonds Are Forever. Didn't happen. Um, the, the Roger Moore films, I think they're really dated. It, like the Connery films are like really classic, even though the Bond novels are the 50s, but the 60s really worked. The 70s and kind of the 80s, Bond becomes like really, really silly and campy and over the top, but but it suits Roger Moore's style, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of him. I can put them on to go to sleep. Um, and then, oh, what, what about Jaws? Come on, Jaws is my favourite Bond villain. I love Jaws. Jaws, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, do you know there what? You hey, Very hey, good. Quint's, uh, Quint's fucking shark fishing here. Yeah, all right, all right, Jaws, the Reve- Jaws the Revenge, that's what I've got on, which is, I mean, it's not... Oh, God. Clearly, uh, Ben didn't get the uh, memo here, but yeah, I mean, see, here's the interesting thing too. It's blue. Right? <laughs> this is uh, Sean. You <laughs> asked the question about uh, you know it being a reboot, but for a character that has uh, had movies out since the '60s, so many different Bonds are they not all just reboots? It's not just a continuing story. So basically, you can look at any new actor stepping into the role as a reboot. Wouldn't you say that's fair? Yeah, I mean, it could have, it could have, uh, it could have rose or fall on, on, you know, on the actor. Really, you can see what happened with Timothy Dalton. If if his films had come out now, he'd have done a lot better. I think they just went too dark, too fast. And then they got caught up in legal wrangling. Brosnan comes back with the nineties with probably one of the best Bond films, Goldeneye. 
brilliant. Love that film. Uh, but then his films get gradually less and less. Tomorrow Never Dies is okay. I've got a soft spot for, for the world. Uh, the world is not enough, but it, it's a bit ropey in places. What is not enough? That's um, that's Robert Carlyle. Isn't yeah, it? it's no. like a guy who can't yeah. feel, and it starts to go down the line of oh, oh it's killing right, all his yeah. senses, and you're like, oh god, this is no. And then Dino of Day was uh, the only thing which isn't bad with the hovercraft, but it just become it became a bit of a mess, and it got it became known as Buying of the Day because there was that many sponsorships in it, which are paid for the office now. Um, they scaled them right back for Casino Royale. And like you said, Dan, about um, when when the Bond identity came out, you know, Bond was looking really old fashioned at that point, and people thought, can it can it kind of survive? A bit like now, because it's in such a state again. But let's not get to that point too. Well, soon. it's 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 interesting too. I, I would like to uh, go back and see how the uh, the quality of films when an actor takes over how they tend to go down. I mean, we we mentioned it with Bros, and I'll admit. My Bond knowledge is limited, even though Casino Royale is not only my favorite Bond film, but I, I would dare say it's near the top 10 of my all-time favorite films. There's just something about this movie that I love. But uh, oh, you, 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 what's the matter? What, what, what's the problem with that? Top top 10 favorite films. Uh, okay, listen, Oof. bro. You know you and I see films Steady, very differently. Top 10. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love this movie. I can watch it over and over again. Now, again, when you throw out those lists, those top 10 lists, they become very subjective. I mean, am I going to say it's like, you know, the, the, the top 10 as far as like uh, acting or cinematography or, or whatever, but for what I want, for how I want to spend two plus hours, this is a movie along with nine others that I would probably put on over and over and so, over so again. So you're telling me you've got Star Wars one to nine and then you've got <laughs> Casino Royale. <laughs> what are you telling me? What a ridiculous list. <laughs> Ludicrous. Uh, I hate you, man. Why did why did why are we stuck and tethered at the hip together for all these podcasts? God it sucks. But uh anyways, my point before I was so rudely interrupted Sorry. was that you get a uh you, you get a new actor in. It seems to be a splash with the first one, and then it's diminishing returns on every film after that. Yeah. So and I feel the same way with Bond. I, I I really liked Casino Royale, one of my top 10 films. And then everything there kind of goes down, save the third one. I really enjoyed Skyfall. But uh, yeah, it's hard oh, to maintain nah. a, a level of quality, right? Yeah, and I think the, the, the Daniel Craig film, Bond films as well, I think what they do is they, they decide to try and tie it all together and it just doesn't work. If you want to bring it to Star Wars, I've only ever seen the first one chronologically made and Rogue One. Well, this was great, guys. I really enjoyed the chat. I Fan? will, uh, I will, I'll I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Star Trek, I'm a Star Trek kid, right? The yeah, old fashioned. You have, you have to tread very Trek. carefully with Star Wars in front of the Mac, of course. Very I'm carefully. Just, He's still I'm refusing is, to do an episode with me. He's refusing. He won't do a Star Wars episode. Well, no, all, 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 no. all I'm saying is the Craig films, they seem to try and tie all of like the Bond films together it being all part of this big organization and you can just kind of tell they retroactively thought it up and started to kind of fit it. And it doesn't really work for me. And I think the, uh, some of the Craig films, uh, Skyfall, I wasn't the fan of Spectre. I thought was forgettable. Part of the opening sequence. Um, Spectre again, not some. I, I haven't, good. I've only seen quantum of solace once, but Oof. is that, is that not for, well, for, for quite a few, is that not regarded as his weakest entry? I just thought it was, boring for 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 a bond film it's just i i think that's a very unforgivable indictment uh, you know it's be boring that's i i just don't remember much about it you know no well no, i, I don't think, I, I can't even no i was just gonna say i don't i, I can't even take a guess of what the story the, story the was pro- about the big but... problem with that one um is it came out 2008 quantum of solace but it was in the run of films and TV where they had the writer's strike in America and it affected all sorts. So, like, it affected oh, because right. the okay, writers yeah. wouldn't write. And you can tell when you watch that. Film. I like it. I really like Quantum of Solace because it knows what it is. It's a bit forgettable that the villain is what is meant to be forgettable. Uh, I love the whole bit in, and it, uh, but it's a little bit more about um, Vespa and her effect. It comes out a bit like a DVD extra of Casino Royale. And oh, it, that's- <laughs> That's an interesting does, way of looking at it. It does. No, because it feels like it's just a bit of a continuation of the story. And then by the end of it, people were like, well, he's in the same position. No, because the end of Casino Royale, um, I would say spoilers, but come on, it's been, what, 16 years? Um, <laughs> um, he's kind of, he's Bond. He's become Bond. He's, you know, broken-hearted and cold-hearted. And 
you know, blows the guy's leg off pretty much. So that's, that's where we find him and the music plays. But it was kind of showing how we got there that I liked about this film. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it, it also comes on the heels of uh, a, a very realistic origin story uh, tale that we got with Batman Begins the year prior, right? And you can, uh, I heard that there was influences from what we got in Casino Royale from that. It's kind of like, okay, this is the kind of thing that people want to see, a, a grounded origin take on a very popular character that's been around for decades. Now, starting with uh, the, the cast here, how did you guys feel when it was announced that Craig was uh, going to be picking up the mantle as 007. For me, the only thing I'd ever seen of him before was Layer Cake. I, I enjoyed it, oh, but I didn't uh, I didn't really know much about the guy. Well, if, if you're from where I'm from in, in the North England, well, the only one from the North England in the podcast, um, he was in like Our Friends in the North. So he, he's been seen. That was drowned in years ago. So he'd been seen in things, but he was kind of an unknown entity, really, in terms of... He did lay a cake and that was kind of about about it for like his mainstream presence. I just remember all the furore around him being blonde. Like I remember the headlines being like blonde bond and all this. I don't know. Mm -hmm, ben, I remember do you, that. ben, do you remember? I don't know what it was like around the world, but it was pretty heavy in the press over here. Yeah, there was the whole thing about when he was on the boat when they were presenting <laughs> oh, him yeah. as bond and he was because he had to wear a life jacket. Everyone was like, oh God. Look at that pansy. That's not Bond. <laughs> Bond doesn't wear life jackets. Get him off. Push him out of the boat. It's like, yeah, all right, okay. But no, it was, yeah, because it was, Bond had a certain look up to that point. And he really, that was just, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know if that's just based on the character that, that um, Ian Fleming created. That that was just the look and that, that's and that's just what they, they stuck to for the first X amount of Bonds. So, um, and, and, and you know what it's like? You know what people get like? Yeah. fanatics and, and fans you start you start diverting a little bit or you start doing something a little bit different they all they all lose their mind so yeah but look i i wasn't i'm not a huge bond guy so it's, it's one of those things where when they announced daniel craig as bond i'd seen him in a few bits and i was like okay yeah he's yeah he seems all right i'm interested to see how he's uh how he's going to go with this and to be fair to daniel craig he pulls it off quite well in the sense that Bond is Bond is a shit, isn't he? Oh, like, yeah. he's, he's, oh, he's absolute, yeah, yeah. He's he such is. a shit in all these films. And I think Daniel Craig plays plays up to that perfectly. I think Daniel Craig is, is a massive prick. Yeah. And that, that's what Bond's doing, isn't it? Like, that's that's what he's all about. And I think he does that really well. Um, and I think it it continues somewhat throughout the rest of the films, but then it's 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 toned down a tad because it's more dealing with the anguish he felt. He, he feels after Vesper and all that sort of stuff. And so he's not, I don't know, without rewatching all of them, I, I know the tones are very different from, from Casino Royale on, but the, uh, the prickiness from Cray sort of gets subdued a little bit within the, the plots of the other films. But no, no, I think, you know, I, I, yeah, I think he's a, I think he's a decent bond. I think he, he took it in, in a decent direction and maybe the, the films and the quality weren't, weren't for some, but uh, I think he was, uh, I think he was pretty good. I think he he was definitely um, one of the most physically imposing Bonds. If you if you look back at the history before him, I mean, uh, there's that classic uh, shot of him coming out of the water, and he he looks like he can handle himself, man. Uh, perhaps maybe not since Sean Connery, but uh, yeah, I, I I again stating that uh, you know I, I really enjoyed this film. Him in that lead role was one of the reasons I bought him. I I, I bought him as the the, the suave, uh, lethal uh, agent, you know, I, I thought he, he was fantastic. He is very pouty in this one. We're, we're, we're getting we're getting quite a lot of pouts from Craig in this one. I have to I should add that it's it does it does become a bit more it does become less pouty as we go. But um, yeah, yeah, the scene coming out so the scene at the beach coming out of the water is is obviously just obscene. It's good, like it's it's funny, it's comical. But um, yeah, very pouty, and and the dialogue from Craig in some scenes is is shocking. Not his not his fault, but it's well, we get to that. There's there's one line in particular later which is just they, remarkable. They, they made an ice lolly of that of his torso that you could buy. I mean, like, where, where, where can you get it? Where can you get it? I don't know if you can still like... get it. Maybe you could oh. get a three D sculpted mold somewhere. I don't I'm, know. I'm I'm wearing it. I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need Craig. I've got it. Well, uh, another casting, uh, you know, I don't know if you would call her the, uh, the, the second lead, but 
Eva Green. You can say um, Bond. You can say Bond girl, Dan. She's a Bond girl. Uh, okay, but but, but not but. traditionally. Not not a traditional Bond. True. Girl. Quite yeah. an interesting Bond girl, isn't she? Yeah. She's actually she she's quite fleshed out for Bond yeah. girls. Yeah. And, and 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 I think uh, one of the reasons why this film resonated for me anyways was the chemistry between between the two of them i, I bought oh, yeah. it like yeah. I, I i thought it was uh was just fantastic from the moment she sits down and the because i mean the, the bond girls from what i had seen before they were the eye candy they're the sex appeal that uh you know we all get to vicarious live live through him and all these beautiful women that he comes across but she is a <laughs> counterbalance for him and I buy her because you know like like for example who was remember when Halle Berry or not oh, Halle Berry no not about, Halle Berry no, we're not going who was down. the other one uh she dated oh. Charlie Sheen forever what oh was... Denise Richard oh. yeah you don't <laughs> you don't like it oh my god you're just, you're just like no in Turkey. oh my god honestly yeah you, you look at her and you're like <laughs> no no, you're you're just Denise Richards. And she was a she was a new yeah. Not only did they have her right, she's an all right actress in, in her wheelhouse. She's good, but a nuclear physicist. They had her as a nuclear physicist. Oh, it's like, oh really? Wind like, up, come on, like Can you imagine Piers Brosnan trying to keep a straight face during those scenes. <laughs> it's like, sorry, Denise, but fuck it out. Come on, <laughs> who wrote this shit? And, then you've and got that's Halle something. Berry, uh... And that's something that uh, puts Eva Green. I think above that, you know, Bond girl, because it's a dismi- it's a dismissive title if you think about it. I mean, too bad we don't have a, a female perspective on here to let us know what they think of that title as a Bond girl. I just looked at her as as as, as a main character, and I uh, I also I have a huge crush on Eva Green. I don't know what it is about dark haired foreign women, but uh, they are my <laughs> group tonight. I mean, say it as it is, Dan. Don't worry about it. Go for it. Yeah, she's but, well, she's she's stunning, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Yeah, she yeah. Is. The, the whole um, the whole train scene is that was very good, and that's that's I won't say it now, but that's the the dialogue they have between themselves later is is a, is a shame because it starts off so well for me in the train and and pretty much throughout. It's only the the last sort of half hour that they 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 just start coming out. Maybe that's just love. Maybe that's what happens when you fall oh, in love. Yeah, you just start coming out with just just ben, nonsense. The thing is, I don't know. As well, going against physics, right? He gets tortured at the end. And then, like, a few days later, he's, like, getting it on with her at the side of the hospital bed. And you're like, mate, if you've taken a beating that we think you've taken, there's no way you're going to be getting down with that. Oh, yeah. You know, Other than when he's, like, when he's doing sort of, like, a Stephen Hawking impression when he's just in his chair <laughs> and he's just sitting there. And it's just like, come on, come on, Dan. How much time hammer. do you think has passed, though? How much time do you think has passed? <laughs> I, I got the impression it was... God knows. I got the impression it was weeks. I didn't think it was, like, a couple of days. But, I mean, that's up for debate, I guess. Yeah. It was just, yeah, just, just, just an odd scene when he's at the retreat, just all of it. But yeah, um, no, even great, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, attractive, he, yeah, very, you get very good looking. Swiss guy who comes, to, and then there's a few lines where Daniel Craig tries to do that kind of comedic bond, and it, it doesn't lift. Where the, no. the Swiss, the Swiss guy turns up and he's like, huh, "Did you bring any chocolate?" And the kid's like, "What? Where's this come from?" That I know. Yeah, it's that's like, what you're it, on about, it, yeah. It's yeah, it's like the the getting his balls hammered has just completely scrambled his brains. It's just, hey, hey man, that's all, fair enough. Look, that's what I'm saying. Enough. You know, he, yeah, he's, he's had his balls scrambled and he's fallen in love, <laughs> so he starts coming out with just just rubbish to Eva exactly. Green, and she comes out with equal rubbish. But um, yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm well, I mean we? Eva Green. Yeah, I mean that uh, that 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 whole ball smashing scene seemed <laughs> now in retrospect. This. So they seem like, in retrospect, sort of a metaphor for what it's like to be in a relationship, you know? Oh, that's a good point, um, actually, yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, no, Eva Green thought she was fantastic. Uh, I also like that they brought Judy Dench back yeah. as M, even though that sort of, you know, getting back to, like, what's a reboot, what's continuity. I just think her presence there uh, gave it some sort of tethering to the Bond universe as opposed to a clean sweep of casting. Yeah, it was it was a good cho- it was a good choice I think, because it helped in the same way that when Pierce Brosnan started in Goldeneye and she really anchored him by just he- hitting head on you know your sexist misogynist Dan is on a relic of the Cold War again in this one, she she challenges Daniel Craig's Bond and is essentially like look how well your charm works another one's dead, um I, I kind of I liked that I enjoyed that I thought I think it was a good way to do it. And yeah, I mean, back then, what, 2006, people were bothered about continuity, whereas now I think people would just go, all right, because there's so many reboots and all this kind of. And in the Bond films, there's 
again, like I said, I am kind of out of my depth here when it comes to the history of Bond films and, and what sort of standard they're held to as far as continuing on from the previous. I always looked at them as just sort of standalone things. Yeah. Maybe you would bring yeah. a, a villain in or out, but uh, for the most part, they were kind of their mm -hmm. own entities, which gave them the ability and freedom not to be tethered to a, a cinematic universe, yeah. if you will. Well, they destroyed that with the Craig films. They kind of go, oh, okay, uh, uh, we'll, we'll tie them all together, which I don't like because they don't become a standalone, which you've kind of got to have known what's gone on before, which I, I didn't really like. So I Yeah, they, they did suffer, didn't they, from, from that a little bit, the uh, the Craig films, that they, they all continue. Because, I don't know, I'd... Oh, what's, what die? Uh, oh, man, what was the last? What was the, um? Oh God, what was the recent Bond film called? No time to die. In which no time to yeah. It was uh, yeah. I, I I don't know. I just yeah. Like, I guess it was different, I suppose. And but I don't. I wasn't. I wasn't sold enough on the whole Vesper and and the tragedy and and everything about it to to then warrant having to spend another four films like figuring out who the uh, who's been the sh who's in the shadows or. Oh. Is it Blofeld? Oh no, it's even bigger than him. Oh, it's it's, <clears> it's like, yeah, that, they're fine. They're fine as individual stories, but I just wasn't, I wasn't sitting there going, oh god, what's the next piece of the puzzle? Oh, now he's on a boat. Now he's going to a lake. Oh shit, who's this? Like, okay, uh, okay, Ben. Okay, right. Ben. I get it. You don't like fun movies. That's fine. Let's talk about the oh, one I that like, was I good. I like fun Let's... movies. I just, you know, <laughs> I just, well, we. How did you feel? How did you feel with the whole how the story continues throughout? Because this is different for for Bond, certainly. How you know one film then. You, the story continues and we get this five arc film of Daniel Craig's Bond. Ending. Are you asking me? I am, yes. Yeah. yeah I, okay, so again, I just take a look at it from where we are in the state of franchises it, as they started with the, the, the you know, reboot with the Craig ones. Um, we're, we're launching into the Nolan uh, cinematic universe with Batman around the same time. Then a couple of years later, they have Iron Man and they build the MCU. So I think that, you know, it was only natural that the studio was like, okay, well, people like these. Let's try to make everything connected. And it was the thing to do at the time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And maybe when they, when they, because this is it for Craig, uh, when he uh, is recast. Oh, no, please come back. Uh, <laughs> When, when when he's replaced, maybe they'll go back to a different formula standalone, which I think is fine. I, I think right? it's I think a bond I think a franchise is finished. I really do. I think, nah, what, I think what they've, no, I do no I think what they've done, what they've done. What's, what, what do you mean finished? What do you mean because, finished? Well there will that. never be another bond movie. No, but it, no, but they've no, but they've, they've killed they killed the bond character at the end of a film, like which, which is what no director's ever done. I think Daniel Craig's had a much more creative control over these films. That's why they kind of delved into the law of them. Because he likes to get his teeth into films and that kind of thing, which I think to an extent Bond needs to remain like this callous. We never got a proper Bond film from him. Like Cyril's good, but he's becoming this archetypal cold-hearted killer Bond. You know, he falters, falling in love, and then he, you know, he's cold-hearted by the end. We never get like we we never get kind of like a gold finger type film where he's just Bond and he just does a mission. It's always all oh, boo hoo, and then it's you know he find he meets Leah Sidhu's character who's just boring as hell i mean she's a good actress but the character's nothing there and then they make a whole thing about that's the love of his life but they're still harking about to vesper and it's like oh they're too much but they killed bond so the problem is then you've, you've taken away not to get serious guys for a minute they take away any kind of uh you know any kind of worries because you think well if bond can die in a film and then return again then there's no there's no element of danger there it's like oh well never mind it can just it can just turn up again yeah, but when you're talking about killing the franchise, you're speaking specifically about Daniel Craig as the character, correct? You're not talking about Bond films as a whole. No, no, no. I, I no, I, I mean this in, in terms. It's just my opinion. It means nothing to anybody else. But because, well, because of what they've done to Bond, because they've decided to kill him in a film, where did he go from that? Because he could he could essentially die at the end of every one, and you just go, oh, all right, never mind. Like another one will come back. We'll have somebody else. I just think it was a strange thing. It was like they decided as a franchise, oh, Daniel Craig's going, oh, no, we're never going to replace him, even though he's like, what, the fifth or sixth Bond or whatever. Um, and, and then they decided to just kill Bond because he was leaving. It was like, that's a weird decision. A weird decision. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and maybe that was just their way of saying, okay, this iteration, this interpretation of the character, we're done with. It will sit dormant for, I would wager a guess, no longer than four to five years. You'll see another Bond. 
you'll see a female blonde, you'll see a black bond, and we'll see how the, the you know, the, the universe accepts that. But you can't take a franchise, like, again, if Batman can return from Batman and Robin, there ain't no franchise that's going to be destroyed off of one bad film. That's just my opinion, you know, my uneducated yeah, opinion. I would it. love, to, I'd love to have that optimism. But I honestly think just because of the way they've kind of forced it into a corner, I think a lot of what Bond represents as well, you know, not to get into the politics of it, but it's kind of, it's unsavory now, you know, the whole, it, it, it's not, I don't think a lot of it, they, they, they do like the last film, he doesn't, he doesn't sleep with anybody, he mopes, then he tries to make jokes. The MacGuffin was terrible. It's like, it's worse than a Mission Impossible film, that last one, about the ma- nano might. My- the microbe things that go in your blood and it kills certain people. It was just awful. No, the, the, the storyline, the storyline is naff, isn't it? It is naff. Horrendous. It is naff. I think I think Rami Malek is is not. Is is he look he looks the part? I just think he's just not. He needs to be in a, he needs to be in a different film serving a different plot line. Yeah, I think and I think Rami Malek's bad guy would have been a lot better, but. Yeah, look, it's I think I think with the future of the franchise, it's they've they've set it up the way they have to introduce a female bond like you said to introduce oh. a black bond an asian bond you know whatever they're going to go for because they've they've killed off bond so it's like well the next one's got to be you know completely wild what are we going to do oh here we and we had we got a taste of it in um god i forgot what's, what's the no, latest no time, to die, no time to die no time to die fuck me uh, yeah, I, um, the, the the sigh I give is is not for the is not for it becoming like I I was a big advocate of Idris Elba. I think he's too old now, but I'd have loved to have seen an Elba Bond. I would have loved to have seen it. But in terms of making the Bond character female, it just doesn't work. It it's not it, it can never work. You could make a female Bond, but they would not be Bond. They would be if you want to well, make that kind of spy we, film, go make one with a woman as the yeah. Head we, head, you know, we, we sampled like, it, didn't we? In in the latest Bond and like. You know, I don't. I can't say I was a big fan of of her performance, to be honest. Not because she's a, a female. I just wasn't. I just wasn't on board of it. Maybe it didn't help because Daniel Craig's still there and Bond's still there. So it was like, well, you know, like what's going on here? I, I just wasn't. Maybe someone else steps in. But like, okay, I can get on board of this. But realistically, how they've left it, I'm assuming that's where they're going to go. But initially, anyway, because everyone's going to be like, I think. I think a lot of people have probably got the same. Um, standpoint and mindset as you Sean I think people are like well what do we do like you've killed Bond so yeah you're going to bring back because it, the franchise is worth too much money to just stop making films but like you know you can't just bring back a younger guy I'm not I'm not buying that you've got to you've got to do something radical but then realistically those same people if you introduce a, a female Bond I, I think a lot of people are just gonna be like what no no you can't do that Bond's not a woman what's going on no, a bond, so, uh, no it's true but a Bond isn't and, and I don't it was just kind of weird. Like, if they're going to go for a female Bond, go for it. I won't watch it. <laughs> but, you know, it's not to say it wouldn't be good. I'd love to be proven wrong. I'd love to, a Bond to come out if it was if it was female, if that's the way they go with it. But we'll have to see. MGM's been bought, hasn't it? And we've got a, a taste of where they're going to go. Because I think we've got... Uh, it's been in the news that they're going to do some kind of 007 reality show. Did you see that, Ben? I don't know if it got to Canada. Oh, I just thought, Jesus, this that's, is where it begins. That's... Sounds no, I mean, again, uh, we can we can probably speculate on on, on what the future of the character holds yeah. and get lost down that rabbit hole. But I mean, I, I think Cena Royale, this, come on, Dan. I was just gonna say, I, come I, on, that's what you're here for to, to rein us in. Let's, come let's on. talk about let's talk about where where it started off once they switched to Daniel Craig. So, yeah, again, guys, like, um, you know, if we can. If we can bring it back to Casino Royale, and uh, I think we're all in agreement that it was a it was a fantastic reboot with the uh, you know the introduction of a, a new guy in the lead role, and I, I I I liked how it started off. They had that black and white scene where you can see someone has uh, come into their office there, and he's doing some shifty stuff, and Bond is just waiting for him. I love that little exchange between the two of them. And uh, how he's just kind of talking down. It's like, ah, yeah, you know what, Bond? I, I'm, I know if you'd reach double O status and, and you haven't yet because you need two kills. And then you can see he's trying to stall him as he, he's like, shame we didn't know each other. As he pulls out the gun, he's like, well, at least I know where you keep your gun. And it's his realization of like, shit, yeah, I'm fucked. And just the way he's like, 
mm, quite. And it says, ah, I, I, I love that exchange. And then boom, we get the opening credits and Bond is known for its custom, uh, its custom openings with yeah. the song of a famous artist. And right off the bat, I was like, um, in this is this is this is great what about you what about you two yeah it's very well cut together i think that that opening bit and i I love the bit where it's like how did he die your contact not well and then it's a cut with like the guy it it is pretty brutal the way bond films go you you know right off the bat that this is not your ordinary film i mean the first guy he kills he essentially drowns him in a sink well then he shoots him but and it's like okay this is a different kind of film to what you're used to and you either run with it or you don't. The only thing, and I'd love, not that I don't respect your opinion, Dan, but I know Ben, <laughs> I know ben, ben will have a good answer for this. Um, ben, I don't quite get watching it back now why they made that beginning part black and white. Like at the time, I think it was meant to show it was old and all this kind of thing. But looking back at it now, it's like I don't get why they started it in black. I mean, visually it's lovely, but I just don't get it. Any, like I can't see why they did it. What do you think? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not sure. I do have a good answer actually. Yeah, that, stylistically, yeah, it's yeah, it gets you it gets you into the mood of the film. You're like, oh, where's this going? But it doesn't really do anything else for the rest of the film. We could have just had that exact scene just in color. Mm-hmm. I, I, was it was it a homage to something? Was it? I'm not sure. I, because, I think... because it was Bond's origin story. Is is that what we're we're going for? Maybe. Because we're going back to. Well, we're not going back to the 50s or whatever because yeah. we are in present day in 2006. So, yeah, apart from that, apart from it, it looked pretty good and it was a little bit different. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if there's something in the trivia where it's like the reason I, they I, did it in black and white because I mean, they don't have a, Cray wanted it like this. So, yeah, God, they. I'm not sure. They don't have a, a gun barrel sequence. So that, that opening montage acts as one because he shoots the guy and the blood runs down. And um, I don't know why I did that with my hands. The blood runs down. Um, and it, it, that's where the colour jumps in and the amazing title sequence jumps in, which which I love, which again was a change to the Bond films in the showed Bond fighting men. It didn't show lots of women kind of dancing around, which I know at the time again was a bit like, oh, there's yeah. no women in the title sequence, but it's actually one of the best title sequences in my opinion. I think it's great. No, it's 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 fantastic. And like you'd mentioned with that opening uh, fight scene, you get a sense of what you're in for. Like, hey guys, this is the bond. This is the this is the way we're going. Do you remember the born identity? We did too. Here we go. <laughs> and uh, then we go from that into I think just that magnificent. You can call it over the top, but magnificent opening scene where they're running through the construction building as he's chasing the uh, the the parkour guy. Oh, yeah. And I just I again I had never seen anything quite like that and you felt everything you felt uh, as he was jumping from one crane to the other we're like oh jesus like that that looks like it friggin hurt and it was just such a uh, uh you know it, it, another thing that just pulled me right into what was going on i'm like i'm here for it man i am here for this movie yeah it's the complete antithesis of good word i love that word of dying good of day in yeah, yeah. it's cgi and it's shocking it's horrendous. And then you've got this film, you know, that I think the film in the Bahamas with the crane and it has that beautiful shot over the top of the crane and the two guys fighting. And it's like, well, that's actually two guys on top of a crane about God knows how many feet in the air and um, fighting it out. And I think it, it kind of, it's such a well-made film. Like it, if nothing else, it could be, it could, it didn't have to be Bond, but it's just such a well-made film. Um, I, I loved it. I loved that sequence and the world discovered Parker. I didn't know. So <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. And, and the uh, not only do we have sequences like that, um, we also get and at this time, uh, I don't know what it was like for you guys in England, but uh, the World Series of Poker and, you know, seeing so many shows on sports channels uh, with professional poker players was right around the same time yeah. and how they interwove that sort of topical thing i would say into this movie i thought was so well done and and as much as we get those 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 big action set pieces like when they have the uh the airport uh deal where they blow up that and but i loved all the poker stuff 
I, I love them sitting at the table yeah. and reading off each other. And, 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 you know, I, I, I was, I was right in. And I guess we, for, we, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention uh, the, the wonderful Mads Mickelson oh, as yes. uh, Le Chifra. And I just, I, I, I had never seen that guy before. And now you see, he's like omnipresent. He's everywhere. That guy is a, what a chameleon actor. He can be in something like this. What was the film, Ben? You and Tom reviewed about they were. It was like an experiment to see. Oh, how another they could... round. Oh, yeah. superb. superb. Another film. round. He could be in something like that. There was the Dutch film he was in where he was accused of being a uh, uh, a child oh, yeah. uh, sex hunt. offender. That, uh, yeah. I mean, and then he could be in Star Wars. Like this guy is amazing, and he was such an intimidating villain for me. Anyways, I thought just his presence. Yeah, I mean, it's funny you should mention about. Uh, I have got a little bit of trivia. I've brought some Ben, so. Uh, not that Fiona doesn't bring the trivia. We love Fiona. No, um, she, doesn't. She, <laughs> she, does, she doesn't, Sean, so please. <laughs> yeah, so they changed it because uh, the original book, uh, it's backer at the play, but because that's not very well known now, like at the time, in the 50s, it was massive. It was like today's poker. They said there's no point making it backer at because people won't understand. I wouldn't. I don't play cards. But people can, boring. Yeah, people can understand Texas Hold'em. They can understand it. So that's what we'll do. So they did that poker that everyone can follow, everybody gets it. And those scenes are, um, are brilliant. You know, it's a real standoff. That's, you know, they, gi they give Matt Mickelson a little bit, you know, the bleeding eye. And I like that because it gives him a little bit, a little bit of something extra. So you can, you know, you're watching a bunch of them. Well, don't, don't forget you've got Mathis in the background going, right, Eva? Right now he's, he's going, he's going <laughs> all in. Okay? They needed that. He's, they needed that because they, they had to explain what was going on. Right. right? right. Uh, oh, watching look, it. Now, watching those purple it. chips, Eva, they, they mean a hundred thousand. <laughs> you see. Uh, all, right, Mathis, all right. Yeah. Great. It was, it get was, yourself a drink. it was good though. It was, it was good. <laughs> not a poison but, uh, one. No, it's bold though, isn't it? It was bold. The fact, well, not bold, yeah. but it was, it was, it was, you know, the fact that they went, do you know what? We're going to have a Bond film. We're going to have 45 minutes of just them playing poker. Well, oh, oh, okay. That's interesting. Well, how's this going to go? And look, yeah, it helps because each hand was like a fucking killer. Yeah. You, you didn't see, you didn't see any of the, any of like the six hours of just, you know, just folding hands time and time again, but yeah, that helped, but no, it was good. I, and with, with Mads as well, I think Mads, you know, like we've said, he, he completely sells it as the, uh, as the bad guy. Um, you know, and, and I think, but also, I think it's good because the, the other people around that table, the other the other competitors around the uh, the poker table, they're not they're not the best. The two guys <laughs> at the end, like the, the big black guy and the uh, the old Asian bloke. Yeah, Mister like, Mister Fucker Two, and I can't remember the other yeah, guy's name. Yeah, yeah, it's just like okay, yeah, we get are, they, need to, are, they need to be here, but yeah. like, come on, fuck it. They're more asked about the uh, about the drink. They're all like, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll have yeah. one of those. So will I. And then that's when, like, yeah, that was great. The chief getting really annoyed. Like, is that it? Anybody want to play poker now? Like he's yeah. sorry for well, that's the accent, problem. Like, that's the thing, Sean. They've been sitting there for about four days. So he's like, yeah, we, we've, we've skipped all that stuff because we've just seen the killer hands. But they've been there for about a week. He's like, come on, guys. Yeah. Fucking I need to go home. And there's also there's there's also something about those films where uh, the, the, the protagonist and the antagonist meet in a civil setting. And they kind of like, I know that you know that I know that you know who we are i yeah. really enjoy that kind of interplay and you yeah. kind of see it like a like heat do you remember heat when uh de niro sits down with uh, pacino and they're kind of just having a civil discourse about do i remember heat it's, it's top top ten. 10 you want to talk about you want to talk about top 10 films <laughs> there, there's a top 10 film a top five top three film ben, okay, I've great ben i've never seen it i'm sorry i'm sorry ben oh well, I, well, I'm hey, I'm I'm I think you guys it. just got your next show lined up but Disconnect. getting back to the getting back to the <laughs> sorry, uh the, the poker scene like you said ben what, what how long does it last do you think is it about like a like a 40 45 minutes from when it starts to when it ends and oh like, um yeah yeah about that yeah we've, we've great, obviously the stuff in, in yeah, between him they've dying got the great and, action uh, scenes that are mixed yeah. in where they they go off to sort of follow Le Chief and he gets ambushed by those uh those those freedom the Afri fighters the right no, it's the, well they're like yeah they're african warlords aren't they because that's another thing they have that scene where you see talking about the tone shift in the film like you have like child soldiers don't you in the hall the whole bit around Le Chief. Basically, what he's done is he's taken his clients' money, you know, these freedom fighters around the world, and he's used it as a, his buying in power for this, you know, massive game. Um, and if he loses it, he's more screwed than Bond is, really. So they chase after him. And that sequence where, like, he chokes, he kills the guy on the stairs and fights a guy with a machete with a flipping coat around his arm. 
um, like that. Great that's stuff. a great scene. And then you get um, you get uh, what's her name? Ava Green. Speaking of her, you get that scene with him in the shower, which is really yeah. like you know where they they she's just kind of on the floor, um, because she's helped kind of kill this guy and she can't kind of cope with it. She was meant to be uh, like in a like a underwear. I understand in that scene. Yeah. Um, and she yeah. basically said, no, it would be better if she's fully clothed because who, why why would she be having this breakdown and <laughs> take all the clothes off first? Um, yeah. It works because she's there kind of like, and she's got cold water on. She's shivering, which is a bit, I don't know why she's sat Yeah, there. apart apart from Bond starts to suck the fingers, I was like, <laughs> fuck, I see. I saw your fucking face. Like, here's this here's this great scene and I can look at you and I go, I, you know, I know yeah, what you're saying. Start, he's going to yeah, talk he about the fingers. the fingers. I know he is. What, what is, that? is that them falling in love because he's sucking blood off her fingers? <laughs> I mean, let's not, I mean, come I mean, on. Just, just from a, Jesus. You know, just from a public health point of view as well. I mean, that's not going to help you, Bond. Yeah, it's it? just, yeah, like you know, you know, obviously they had the, you know, like backwards and you know, back and forth between the two. And he sucks the blood off the fingers. He's like, oh, do you know what? I think Bond's all right actually. He's not too, <laughs> he's not too bad. This bloke. It's like, oh, for fuck's it's not a very good oh, life. It's not a good life lesson. Is it? Everything. <laughs> It's not a good life lesson, is it? If somebody sucks your fingers, they're the love of your life. It's a bit. Well, yeah, maybe I it think, holds yeah, true. Yeah. I don't know. But look, I don't know. Yeah, but no, no, no. It is. It is. Yeah. But apart from the, apart from the sucking bit, it's uh, it's effective. The whole the whole build up, the fight, the shower stuff. It's effective. Bar the uh, bar the sucking. The CP this uh, the CPR scene as well. You know uh, the the, uh, no, the like the defib scene where he gets poisoned. Yeah. That's a little bit. Oh, yeah. It's the only bit where they go a little bit kind of. You know, a little bit like, oh yeah, the, you just so happen to have the perfect antidote in your car. That that's the only bit where I was like, this is a little bit too convenient. But I'll but let with it any off. of these, I'll let it off. with these films, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're going into it, you have to have the ability to suspend your disbelief. And yeah, you're right. Like, I, I tend to just go, yeah, whatever. Unless it's just a. Actually, you want to talk about a review? We should do. Uh, uh, Carolina, um, my my other co-host of my former show, she just finished working on a film called uh, film called Moonfall. Uh, we watched a little bit of Moonfall last <laughs> night. Sweet Jesus. Oh, That's not you want to talk about suspension of disbelief. That is oh, amazing. Is that the new role in Emmerich? Is that the new role in Oh, God. Oh, so bad. I can't wait for that. Like, it's, it, it, it is honestly so bad it's good. Like, it's, oh, I, I had a films. hoot watching that film. I love those film. films. But uh, getting back to that scene, too, with the, with the defib, uh, again, a wonderful scene where he's able to, you know, get back into the game and a little bit of a, uh, you know, a back and forth with the sheaf. He's like, oh, that last hand almost killed me. I'm like, ah, that's great. That's great. I, I, I'm yeah. loving this. It's like, yeah, now, you my, my only complaint with this film, which is something that uh, I, I'm kind of running into with a lot of these films that I've seen lately uh, is time. Like this thing runs for about 224. Yeah. And uh, after the whole climax of uh, the, the, the gambling scene, the poker scene, mm -hmm. We get the chase. Uh, the sheep gets taken out by, I guess we're going to call it the specter guy. Um, that last 20 minutes of the movie, just it really dragged. I know it was necessary, but you sort of feel like you already had the climax, right? Like we got them, but we have to sort of finish the story. I don't know how about you guys felt about the I, pacing. I, 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 I think it was warranted. I've never felt that it slows up any point. I mean, dear God, you want to talk about films that are far too long you know the new batman three hours too hey, long you I'm... shut your mouth you oh, shut oh, your too mouth long, right too now. Long, careful too long, careful too long, too long. Don't, don't say the opening bit with the uh, voiceover is lame either oh, no that God. was genius that was that was I, thank you thank you i haven't done a review yet i haven't it's all written down it's it's a good it's a good film with a great film trying to get out it needed a bit of t a bit more tightening it needed a bit yeah, I agree. It's, I, I totally it's agree. just a bit it's too. too long. There's, it's not too long. It's too indulgent of itself at times. So you know how, like they they show him doing things like, and they pause on him putting something down for ages, and you're like, this is like seconds. Like, cut these bits. Out. Let's cut these bits out and get on with it. Like, well, not to get too far off track, but if you have you have you seen the deleted Joker scene? I'm glad they took it out. Good on its own, but but it would have taken away from. I the, loved like, it. Oh, yeah, I but, wish they would have put it back in because nah, it gives that yeah. whole. Okay, no, we got to stop talking Batman because I'll, no, I'll get lost down a Batman. I'll get lost down a Batman hole. It, it, but so, yeah. so you're saying, Sean, that you, yeah. um, and again, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I, I can't on, sit there. And, I, I can't sit there and look at uh, the Casino Royale and go, okay, this needs to go. This needs to go. I just felt like, um, for for me, after 
we have sort of the, the end of Le Chiffre's story. It was kind of like uh, a lot of downtime, which was necessary. Like you've got to set up the story until we sort of get to the the the, the main finale where we find out Vesper is behind the whole thing. What, 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 what say you, Ben? Shit all over it as you do. Uh, well, come on now, please. Um, no, well, the thing is, I think it, it drags because... Well, for me anyway, because if you, uh, you need to be in, you need to be invested in Vesper and Bond. This whole thing about him on the laptop writing his, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good quitting. advert, good advert for Sony though. Yeah, what? it was just so, but, but the like, like I've, I've touched upon the when they're in the retreat and they're they're falling in love and and Bond's coming out with stuff about, oh, I, I have no armor left. It, you've stripped it from me. What one of the worst beautiful. lines in, in Fear yeah. of I can't believe they've they've gone with that. I love that. And it brings it, a tear oh, that to my whole, eye every time. The whole the whole you know silliness of you know jumping uh, around, rolling around on the floor. It's like ben, if you're if, if you're in on that, then great. Then you can enjoy the last sort of See, twenty minutes in Venice and watching them fall in love, and then you're upset about Bond. Oh God, Bond, she's betrayed you. If you're not, you're like, oh, do you know what? Let's just maybe. Let's just end end this because yeah. I, I don't care about Vespa. I'm I'm not bothered about the bombshell. I've I've seen, I've seen them have their little silliness at, at the lake, and it's like, Ugh, all right, let's just let's just get this over with quick. But yeah, <laughs> that's that's why it drags for me. I wasn't I wasn't buying Bond's retired. I see, Bond's I in was. love. I this was. love story is just wonderful. I was like that that armor that I'm still I'm still choking on that armored line. You just they should have ta- they should have taken it out if they take that. I don't mind it, but if, if they took that line out, the line after it is really good because she he says something like whatever is left of me, and then he like pauses dramatically. Ah, whatever is left of me, and she like strokes his face, and she's like he's like whatever is left of me, whatever is left of me belongs to you. Like yeah, but yeah. So this, this is the thing. Like you've you've delivered that short sure, just how Daniel Craig lived just it. Saying, it's, it's an absolute cringe fest. I'm just saying like no I well mean... no it's better yeah it, it's it's he ends it better but yeah the whole um it's just it's just the whole the whole like the whole essence of that the, the yeah. whole lakeside stuff it's and, a bit like who decided you know, who who decided not uh... I'm not I'm not shitting on the film I'm not it's just amusing to talk about it the bit where it's like who decided you know what we need guys you know what we need right here we need Bond writing an email to, to end that's what we need. That's what yeah, this scene. Who yeah. needs that? No one needs yeah, that. Yeah, because he's just he's just so in love. He just can't. He just can't wait to get back to the hotel room. He just, <laughs> he just has to get this done immediately because they're just having such a great time on the lake. How's he getting Wi-Fi on that boat? Like, in seriously? the canal because they're just so in love. It's okay. Like, okay. Uh, right. Anyway. All sorry, Dad. Sorry. No, no, I'm, it's fine. It's apart fine. from the armor line. I'm. I'm. Whatever. It's fine. Like, I'm all right like Sean, it. I've been recording with Ben for the better part of a year now. Uh-huh. I. You have to realize he is void of joy. Right. So when there's things that are touching and emotional, I do, I do have they COVID. don't they do not resonate with him. But getting to the email part, uh, <laughs> I, I, I did I, that so coldly. I did really I did really enjoy after he's kind of like, yeah, he's like, hey, guys, I'm out. Here's my resignation. I'm going to go sail around the world and be happy. That's great. I love it when M gets a hold of him uh, in the hotel room. And, uh, you know, not, I, I believe not in, that his... way. not in that way, people. Not in that way. We're gone. What's that? No, you said she, no. It's just a joke. You said about getting a hold of it doesn't matter. Uh, he's, he's, he's Canadian, sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, sorry, sorry. That's just, it's always funnier <laughs> when you explain it. But sorry, exactly right. Those that. are the best jokes. But uh, when 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 she calls him in the uh, hotel room and uh, he's like, oh, "I see you got my email." She says, "Yeah, we can talk about that in a bit." <laughs> I'm here with the, uh, the the bank wondering when, uh, you know, the money's going to get transferred. And I just love how everything clicks for him instantly. Yeah. He's like, yes, let him know. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that directly. Yeah. And he goes from that. Um, I'm kind of given up on it to where he's like, Shh, like, fuck, I was played and the complete shift. I really did enjoy that, uh, how that was played out. There wasn't a whole bunch of like, what? It was, it was just like his. <laughs> Yeah. His, his training kind of went in and and oh, yeah, he's uh, back on the mission he's back on the yeah. mission then but she leaves her, she leaves her she does betray him but she leaves her phone for him to check um mm. and it, i like the bit where and again some of the line choices are a little bit like i don't it's like m's like i've got a lovely man here from the treasury wondering where the money is i'm like all right like why why did you who decided who decided that it, it's a little bit I didn't one. necessarily bump up against that, but again, it's you know, it's it's it, it's it's each one's taste. Yeah. But um, I wonder why I wonder why she chose death. D- 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 like, I, and I obviously think her death scene is pretty pretty traumatic, right? Watching someone drown the way she's sucking in the water, I was like, 
Holy fuck! Is, is man. her is, is her lover dead as well? Has he been has he been knocked off? No, oh, but he was a no, scam. No, no, he was a alive. scam, right? He's alive in the second one. Oh, he's Bond, alive. Yeah. Bond finds him and leaves him that Algerian love knot. Because what he does yeah. is basically he get he gets involved with agents around the world as part of well, it was it was quantum, wasn't it? Until they got the rights to Spectre again. What I don't like about them just making it up as you go along. Um, <laughs> they they like he's part of quantum, so he gets in there and he literally and figuratively um with with these agents <laughs> and and sorry Dad, he gets in there and, he, and he, he he kind of gets them to fall in love and then he kind of they betray them because he finds he finds somebody with he's she's oh so uh, he's sorry like, he's in quant he's in quantum of solace her uh, her lover yeah yeah because yeah, right at the oh, end right right, okay. right, right, end, right bond right, finds yeah, okay. him uh, and he's like he's doing the same thing they did to vespa um in terms of like turning her um, with a, like a French government woman and Bond's like, get, get right, out okay. of here. Get out of here and tell your sources. Yeah, I, I, I just don't remember any of that film. I've only seen it once. I like it. Yeah, I really I don't like it. Any of it. I, I like that ending. I, I I liked how they, they, they tied the two together. But yeah. They should um, have left the Vespa stuff there. They should have stopped it there because he should have got over it, which begs the question, why did they then drag it out for three? Anyway, like Casino Royale, yeah. Um, hey, 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 clearly, guys, you have never had anyone say to you that there is no armor left. And they I bet Fiona has. So you can't Fiona, just let that go. You just can't Fiona, let that go. Fiona, she, if Fiona's listening, she needs she needs to do that. I just the please record Ben's reaction. But shower the door. I mean, I mean, overall, um, and I, I like, I, I really like the way this movie ends with him, sort of like he's he's got his armor back, and he's uh, he, he's very. <laughs> oh, he, he, ben, he's like he's very cold. He's very cold, and he's like you know, I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I thought it's, I thought the line is like, whatever, the bitch is dead. I was like, ah, that's a little. Yeah, again, again that, just, that's just a little a dialogue horse. choice. Yeah, old. Yeah. yeah. It'd be like, yeah. whatever, she's gone. I don't care. Something like that would have been a little bit better. More of like a teen, like, whatever, I don't care. She, yeah, I don't care. Blame she's anyway. Bitch. She sucked. She can keep my, she can keep my mixed hair. Yeah, it was a yeah exactly. <laughs> but I, I, I do like how he's just, he's tossing all of her shit. And then again, like <laughs> even, even M says, uh, has it ever occurred to you that you know, she knew who you were. And I was like, ah, that was kind of cool. And he sees uh, kind of bing and he checks the checks the phone. And uh, I just love the final shot. I love those kind of like I, I call them like splash pages where you would open up the center of a comic book and you've got the artwork that goes across the whole thing. And it's like this big dramatic thing. And I love how he takes out that guy uh, on the steps and just walks up to him with the uh, automatic rifle and drops the james bond line i'm like that's fucking yeah i'm in cannot wait to see where they go from there well and... they go literally straight from there quantum of solace starts off with bond being yeah. chased and the guys in the boot because they have this massive car chase if you remember <laughs> with the alpha Romeos. yeah and then and then it stops and bond opens the boot and he's like it's time to get out with mr white which is the character it's just in there like yeah bond, mr white like, that's bleeding it. and crumpled and uh we have people everywhere bond everywhere yeah yeah, I uh, thought that was I, I I did like aspects of Quantum of Solace. I really but... liked it. It just it it suffered it, it suffered from what was going on in the film industry at the time. I think you can see, but it still did a pretty bang up job. I think. But yeah, I, I I'm not gonna argue that. I I did buy it. So um, you know what I mean, what what did we think about the uh, the the fight scene in the the but like the body works? You know, you know that scene where he finds the guy. He's like slept <laughs> with the guy's wife, hasn't he? Then the wife gets killed, and then. He, he like fights that guy, doesn't he? he? Like, oh yeah, he sits him down and like pats him on the face. Like, there's a few bits in there where there's a few like Connery esque moves where he kind <laughs> of he's quite um, cold hearted. Well, obviously, of course he is. But what do we think of that? I, I, I liked it. I mean, again, we can we could break down each and every action scene. Um, but I, I'm probably just going to end up repeating myself. I liked the uh, I liked the hard edge. Uh, I liked how you know visceral it was in in, in many category or sorry many aspects of it uh I, I think it was uh i think it was a win what about you ben yeah no like i said at the start um you know daniel craig's a, a massive dick isn't he? he he's playing he's playing bond to a t i think and yeah no he's uh well i was saying that he, he did leave he did leave the wife he didn't even have his session with the wife before he left so i guess he's you know still no, sticking to the mission yeah, so that's true. uh and she, she was dreadful yeah unbelievably good looking but she, oh my god oh my god Every you know that that laugh, I think I, I uh, as well. I had a I had a hilarious when I saw this in the cinemas. I'll have been about what fourteen, fifteen ish, um, and that scene where she's kissing him and then she, her head disappears out of shot. A friend of mine literally and didn't wasn't even joking. Just went, "Where's she going?" And we were all like, 
<laughs> Where do you think she's going? Where do you think? She... And then they have that really cringy bit where I mean, and this is this is the cringy bit for me, where he's like he's questioning her, and then they have that shot like down Daniel Craig's like torso, and she like goes like this, and her chin's all digging into his abs, and it's like, hmm, and I'm like, oh for God's sake! <laughs> part of it's jealousy, of course, but the other part of it's like not of her of like his abs but but um you're thinking like what is like why did they decide to do that but i do like the yeah, way he's, he, just, he, sort he just leaves her so yeah you get... sort of hope that it's everyone's sort of in on it daniel craze kind of in on it he's like oh yeah this is i'm i'm being such a douchebag this is such a douchey scene like i'm, I'm all in this is great yeah. I, i'm i'm hoping that he was enjoying it and he was like you know how how can we make me look as douchey as possible let's just let's just have her chin rest on my my chiseled abs that i've been working hard for the last six months so uh yeah Again, no, no. i i can't say anything negative about her because she falls into that category of dark-haired foreign woman so oh yeah of course yeah just just you know she just you know just keep just keep her mouth shut and then she's fine <laughs> well obviously <laughs> anyway hey, I, open it, I open it for certain purposes but yeah anyway oh. um, right so yeah um oh, so, like no it. i think uh i think i think the fight stuff and the action set pieces overall uh, yeah I, th I think they deliver i think I've, look, I was I was really looking forward to rewatching this actually because I've I've seen it a couple of times, haven't seen it for a while, and uh, I think overall um, I forgot how I think overall it was really good. Um, it it oh, held up well, uh, and yeah, Mads 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 Mickelson is uh, is unbelievable. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I, my computer is cracked. Oh, for God's sake! So in one day I've managed to crack my phone screen and crack my computer screen, so I can't see like. Oh, for fuck! Never mind. Continue on. Oh, anyway. you, you're not. You're not. You're not missing. Well, we're 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 in wrap up mode. <laughs> yeah, anyways, you're not. You're not missing so, much, Sean. I mean, I mean we're, we're we're uh we're we're pretty good. I mean, for me, like I I probably give this film like an eight out of ten. I, I loved it. It was a, a huge win for me. What about you guys? Yeah, it was great. Great film. Well, I mean, again, like, hey, thanks for having me on, man. Uh, Next time, if you don't want to do it with Ben, that's cool. So, uh, uh, you know, we can... It, it felt like we, I, we I messaged Ben saying, look, if I don't ask you, it's a bit like sleeping with somebody else's wife. It would have felt wrong, you know, in podcast terms. Fair enough. <laughs> not yeah, I, not couldn't be, I just couldn't on. believe it. I just couldn't believe the outrage that you'd ask Mackles and not ask me. And then uh, and then COVID came along and got me. So, uh, you know, Dan was there rubbing his fucking hands together. Going, oh, he's yeah, not going to make it. Was, I thought I was going to be uh, solo. But uh, anyways, man, uh, I... Again, I love coming on, love talking movies. Uh, thanks for the invite. And uh, hey, man, if you got another thing you guys want to talk Batman, boom, I'm your guy. Star Wars? No. Oh, <laughs> Got to do it eventually. Uh, all right. Peace out, guys. He does. See you later. Cheers, guys. I'm just going to pause. Cheers. This. He does not want you to touch Star Wars. He does right. not want your negativity anywhere near it. Well, yeah, Dan's gone. Um, Anybody to listen to this, we're catching up a week later. I don't mind telling people. Um, Dan's Dan's finished. Thanks, Dan. Dan's gone. Ben's back, though, aren't you, Dan? Aren't you, Ben? <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, I still sound exactly the same as I did a week ago. So I, have, I haven't just come back and put this on this voice, this groggy, COVIDy voice. I don't think I have COVID anymore. But yeah, like you said, this is a, a week later, and uh, I sound potentially even worse somehow. So uh, yeah, that's good. But um. Yeah, no, Dan just uh, ended the show for you because it's it's his show now, apparently, because that's what he does on film vloggers and uh, and then fucked off of, of hardly a goodbye. So, but that that's the problem with Dan Mackles these days. Well, probably always, but he does uh, he does think he's a bit of a big deal. He's into all this hockey shit on Twitter, where he makes like wank videos of of him mucking about with a, a jersey. So it's like, okay, you know, the guy's like in his like mid seventies, so it's like, you know. Maybe we should just grow up, Dan. But anyway, he's not here. So just say what you want. Let's just shit on Dan Mackles. He's not here now. So go for it. Also, well, well, it went all right. He just, yeah, I don't know. Just it was just a funny, funny, uh, funny way of going about it. And uh, looking back a week later, yeah, I I trod very uh, well. You told me to tread tread carefully around Batman and Star Wars. Oh, um, yeah. I've never, never seen Star Wars, Dan. I've seen the first one. It was all right. Um, but I'll, I'll, that's all I'll say. Uh, but uh, no, it was, it was it was decent. It was just a bit of an abrupt ending, which I mean, I'm all for finishing them when you know, so, oh, that's it done. But sometimes you want a little bit, of, a bit of care in there, a little bit of you know, telling people where you can find your podcasts and all that. Yeah, kind of I, I think that's that's reasonable. I think he could have at least allowed you to end your own show. You know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't care about letting the uh, the listeners know about where you can find him, which you know, I don't think is the end of the world to be honest. But 
he could have at least let you end, end your own show. But uh, no, obviously not. No, he's just uh, he's just so important. He's just so important and he's just so busy. He's just such a busy guy creating shit on Twitter that he had to get out of there. He had to get on the rest of his day, seemingly. Well, you know, he, he, Dan was the show. Let's be, let's not kid ourselves, Ben. We're, we're just a supporting act in our own lives. Here. Well, we're... that's true, yeah. Yeah, no, he, he has become a, a uh, more of a permanent fixture of film floggers. Um, so, yeah, you know, if it, if it keeps him going, if he gets him out of bed, I suppose, then... Yeah, Dan, you're important. If you're listening to this, you we need you. You're the man. Keep making those shit hockey videos. I've been dying. I mean, you know, I mean good videos. <laughs> I've been dying, you know. I have been dying to ask him. I was going to on the uh, at the end when we'd finished recording, but he went. I was dying to say <laughs> to him, like, Dan, can you explain? Like, oh, no, actually, I best not, you know. I was going to say, him, can you explain hockey to me? Like, ice hockey, because I don't understand it. Like, especially on Twitter. Like, he puts all these things on and all these stats, and I'm like... I do not understand a word. Like, a, a yeah, word we need that. to. Um, no, well, actually, me and Dan were meant to do a, a hockey film, actually, and I've completely forgot the name of the film. It's the the one with Paul Newman in, and the name has escaped me. But we we were meant. To, I think that's renowned. It's well, I've seen it. It's, it was you know, it's a pretty good film. It's quite insaning. It's a like a comedy hockey film. Um, so I, I don't know if we're going to revisit that at some point. But yeah, I'd like to do a a hockey thing just to. Just to like, like you said, just to have that sort of five minute conversation where like, Dan, you know, explain to me what hockey is all about. Explain to me why they beat each other up and just get put in the sin bin for like five minutes. And that's just part of the experience because uh, I actually am quite interested. So, yeah, maybe at some point we're uh, we're, we're timed down to a, a hockey based episode so he can show off even more than he already does. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to upset him though. You know what I'm like? I'd be asking like really daft questions and like, is that it? And is that it? Like I've had that before with like talking about, Amer- I know he's not American, but talking about American sports, you know, their, their football, which is the point in that. Yeah. 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 I do struggle a little bit with, with American football. I got into it a tad when I was in America, but that was more just for the social side. I still didn't really get or care about the actual game. <laughs> it was just too, too stop start for my liking, but yeah, the social side is good. You know, get together, have a few beers, get the barbecue on the go or all that sort of stuff, go and watch the game. And yeah, that's all right. But yeah, without, um, without shitty on American football, I'm not, the, the jury's still out for me on American football. I mean, to be fair, I'm only basing it on one bad experience w- watching the Super Bowl when I was at uni and I found it that boring. I got so drunk because I just, I don't really drink anymore, but I got, I got that drunk because I, I just, I didn't get it. There's no like, there's no running. There's no like, it's it's like rugby. If all it was would be like the scrums, and then they they take like ten minutes to reset everything. I just didn't get it. I don't what is this? What everyone talks about this like amazing Super Bowl? I'm going to get so much hate, but you know, I just I don't understand it. Like I'd look, can't that get somebody give me a shout? If you want to come on and tell me what it's all about, why it's incredible? You know, I've no doubt people out there can't stand football or soccer, as they might say. Like I love it. Um, yeah well similar to the hockey stuff yeah try and get someone on who's who's big into it you know i'd come on for that because i just like to hear well no i I do i do sort of get the rules of it i I just i'm just not getting it that's the problem i I get i get the rules and i get why they do what they do it's just it's still like just seeing everyone go crazy around me and fucking lose their minds when they've got this happen and they're fucking you know changing over the ball and the 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 offense comes back in again oh yeah here we go yeah, what's the uh-huh. crap, what's the yeah, crap with all I the guess. different teams? Like all the different. Yeah, I don't know. Isn't there like an offense and a defense and a somebody else? And I'm like, I don't like. Isn't it just one team players? No, it's like I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But well, if Tom Brady, if you're available, then you know, pop on because you can explain to us what the, what the fuck's going on. Just yeah, make me feel like an idiot. I just I don't know. We don't get we don't get it over here, do we? We no, I don't mean we don't get it as in we don't understand it. We just don't we're not exposed to it, if you will. Um no, no, I think it's they've been they've tried to bring it across, haven't they, to Wembley and stuff the last few years. So they're trying to I, I imagine at some point the Super Bowl will be will be on in the UK at Wembley. I'm assuming that's what they're trying to do with it, maybe, but you know, who knows? Yeah, it's not gonna get like it's not gonna be like an FA Cup final or anything like that, is it? You know, it's like I don't know. 
Yeah, I, I feel we're probably uh, this is probably why Dan left. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh sorry, Cas- Casino Royale. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> outro. What we, what are we um, outroing? How how do we finish this? Uh, I tell you what, I will say though, because I didn't say it in the episode. I do think that uh, Daniel Craig is, is a great Bond, uh, a brilliant Bond in mostly shite films. I can I think Casino Royale was his first and was his best. And I know I whinged earlier on that he, I'd never felt like we got like a Goldfinger type film from him. Because he's always, why is he, oh, that's another thing. Why is he always retiring, Ben? He retires in every, apart from the first one and the second one, he retires in every single one after that. And he gets shot off a bridge and like he's meant, if you get blown off a bridge, you know, have your kidneys missing, like, and he's got like nothing, no scars. He's there, dead mopey, drinking, yeah. drinking a Heineken bottle for the sponsorship. And you're like, oh, is this what we've become? You know, just, it's a good job Dan left, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I feel I need to rewatch them all. Actually, I've seen obviously watched Casino Royale, but I haven't seen. I've been, I think I've only seen the the other. Was it four Daniel Craig Bonds once yeah. each? So yeah, I probably need to watch them again. And yeah, I'm, I'm only going to probably rewatch them all if I'm going to be talking about them. Really, yeah, I think they're all they're all okay in in places. I think they're all they've all got some good stuff in them. What I remember anyway, but. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't get the whole the arc with Daniel Craig. I, is it is it trying to humanize him? Is that what we're doing with? I, I don't know. I just I think like I said in the review, I, I the the fact that the films follow follow along and they, there's there's that one overarching storyline and it, it it concludes in No Time to Die and the whole Vesper stuff. Would it have just been better if we just got different stuff, different plot lines yeah. each film as opposed to finding out who Spectre is and who's in charge and oh no you think he's in charge but oh no it's him it goes even bigger than that it goes even higher than that it's like yeah I guess all right if you're interested in it then fine if if you're not and you just want sort of standalone Bond films with different villains and they're coming into it with different ideologies and they're a different organization it's like okay this is different okay what's the next Bond villain what's he doing why is he why is he doing what he's doing? Why is he trying to kill everyone? Why is he? Why does he hate Bond? But I don't know. Like I get, I get it. It works, I suppose. Yeah, because I mean, you, you have an ending. You have a start point and an ending. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Just reminded me, Ben, uh, earlier on because I, you mentioned Jaws. Yeah, good villain. Uh, loved him in. He was in because I watched the Spy Love Me. Oh, I, got, I found the DVD that I had, and that's the one he's in, isn't it? The first one. He's in that one, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. and then he yeah. comes back in Moonraker. Moonraker, uh, good, yeah, good yeah. villain. I thought, I thought, very menacing, biting bits of massive bits of licorice, uh, which were meant to look like ropes, um, <laughs> like steel cables and stuff. Yeah, the, some of the he's a he's a great villain. I, oh, best Bond villain though. Oh. Do you know what? I'm gonna go Red Grant from from Russia with Love. I think he's probably the best villain we've got. Played by oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He was uh, I can't remember his name. It's gone right on my head. The guy out of Jaws plays Quint in Jaws. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I know uh, who you mean. Anyway, that guy. Um, yeah, and also I, I have got to say, like, you know how you said you didn't you didn't buy like Vesper and uh um I found it, you know, like how you said that you didn't quite buy the whole Vesper and Bond. Like I did, like I bought apart from the few cheesy lines, I bought that that was like the love of his life and she stripped the armor the armor from him. Oh God, geez. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Flashbacks to last week. Um, yeah, you've stripped it from me. <laughs> All right, Daniel. Fucking hell. Take it I know, easy. It's just oh god. Um, oh god, you know what we forgot as well. Oh my god, Ben, I can't believe we forgot this bit. <laughs> when Vesper says to him, Oh god, when Vesper says to him, I rarely get this excited. When Vesper says, Um, if all that was left of you was your little finger. Oh. that would be enough and he's like that's because that's you know what i can do with my little finger and it's like Ugh. like it's just like no like w- like yeah why? It's, it's 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 bouncing all over the place isn't it yeah it's yeah. like sort of jokey like oh yeah i bet bond yeah and then and then the armor line comes after it's like fuck like i said in in the review it's just at that, at that the when they get to the retreat i don't know if it's because he's had the incident with his with his balls being knocked around but it's just like bond and the dialogue in the film just for me just just loses its mind for 15 minutes yeah just, it's a bit, a bit up, up to that point i don't i thought dialogue was fine i thought the acting was good um their relationship was was good 
that the fact that she came in and she wasn't impressed by Bond and that was okay. You know, she wasn't falling for his charms and stuff. And then, yeah, I don't know. It just, he, it he, just, sucked, the fing- he just... sucked her fingers and that, that was it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, God, that, that's a um, weird scene. It's a yeah. weird fucking scene. Um, yeah, that's it. We didn't even get to. We didn't even get to like, and I'm sorry, I know this was meant to be five minutes. Uh, it's me and you, but also we didn't even get to the action scenes. Like the action scenes are decent. Uh, like, you know, when he's fighting the guy, um, he fights one of the warlords who's got a machete with like a flipping suit jacket around his arm. Um, that's just before the finger scene, by the way, the, the finger licking scene, because she helps Bond kill the guy, doesn't she? Um, I thought the, the action sequence is, sequence is pretty decent. Um, they're quite iconic, like the airport. I don't think there's any scene, like action scenes in it that were disappointing. Even um, like where the car flips over. And it's all done pretty much CGI free. There's very little CGI yeah. from, from what I can remember. Yeah, no, I can appreciate that. Yeah. No, it's it's a good romp, isn't it? It's a, it's a yeah. good film. Take away um, it being a Bond film. It's a good entertaining film. Um, I was quite taken back by Dan saying that it was in his top 10 films of all time. I was like, I think that's what he said. It was, it was all time, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was top 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Films, yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go go that far. But it's, um, no, it was like I said in the review, it was, I was looking forward to to rewatching it because I think I've only seen it maybe twice before this. So, it's, yeah, in places it falls to, it falls to pieces a little bit. Um and it maybe drags a, a touch for my liking, but no, it's it's good. I, I think it's a. I, I think the film was uh, was a good start anyway to the whole Daniel Craig Bond films. Yeah, it's just it's all down. It's, it's all downhill from there. I mean, Quantum of Solace was okay. I mean, I like that one. That's my that's kind of like my second favorite one, even though it gets derided a lot. Uh, but the big the big issue for me with the Daniel Craig Bond films is that if someone said to me, you, like you've just said earlier, oh, I want to rewatch them, I would my brain goes. I'd rather rewatch the Pierce Brosnan ones, even though yeah, I have to watch Diary yeah. Today again, just to railroad it. I mean, it's not a, it's not a completely terrible film, but it just it comes across so old fashioned, even then. Yeah, uh, I'd, and I'd, I'd rather re- rewatch some of the older Bonds before yeah. touching the uh, the Daniel Craig ones again. To be honest, yeah, I just but that's see Ben, who did they pay for that CGI? Like what, you could have done better than that. No. Like it's just I'll take it out. Oh wait, 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 wait what CGI are we talking about? Diary of the Day. The, oh the, right oh the, okay oh oh fucking the, hell the, God, the, yeah. the icarus thing and it's like like the action scenes in that it's like the fight scene and it with the swords and madonna turns up and oh, it's just like what ha- it starts off really strong with that film as well um like this surfing don't there and it's the hovercraft bit which yeah it's a bit silly but it's a decent action scene and a lot of it's practical as well um you've probably forgotten it wiped it from your mind actually um that bit's pretty decent. It's like set like North and South Korea or, or some country that's similar, I think. Um, like split in half. It's just it's decent, but it just it just I don't know. The whole bit with Bond and he's old and ugh. he manages to stop his heart working. Oh, it's all just uh yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's sort of coming back to me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, I, if if I was gonna talk about it for a uh, review in the future, I'd probably go and revisit it just just to see. Um, what the rest of the film's like in and around that hideous CGI moment. Just well, just to see if, if there's, you know, if there's any sal- I can salvage a viewing of that and not be uh, not it be completely clouded by that CGI. I don't know. It's like Halle Berry in it. Like she she just seems like just, I don't know. It's, it's just, she did that after Monsters Ball. She won an Oscar and then she bounced straight on to Down of the Day. Well, oh, and then, yeah. she did, then she did Catwoman. So it was <laughs> yeah, that's that was a bit of a tough run, wasn't it? For yeah, old Barry. I mean, I mean, our dad watched that, you know. He said, "Oh, we'll watch this. Might be good." Oh my god! And when you finish a film and you just think that's that's legitimately minutes of my life that I can never ever get back. Yeah, that battle terrible. was terrible. Truly Absolutely shocking. Horrific. I don't think even Dan could defend that one, even though it's in the Batman universe. Like, surely not, Dan. No, I don't mind. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, yeah, but uh, no, I can see it Good film. I, I do think as well the soundtrack's pretty decent. Um, like the Vespa music's pretty cool. Um, and I quite liked that. I know there was a lot of mourning about the, uh, like the, you know, the song at the beginning, uh, You Know My Name. I thought that was a great, great song for the, uh, 
for the uh, for the movie and for like the idea it had that you didn't know who Bond was and it was all about him becoming like James Bond if if you are the Bond that we know. Um, and because later on when it started getting into like Adele did it and then Sam Smith did it and you were like oh, uh, and Billie Eilish did it and you were kind of like although I, I will say this I think Daniel King's films um, the last three um, like the music was better than the film, which is never a good sign on my, my thoughts anyway. But uh, yeah, where can people find you, Ben? Cause I'm <laughs> kept you a while. Uh, where can I, where can I be found? Um, yeah. All the socials. I won't, I won't list them all. Unless you want me to list every single, <laughs> single platform available then. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. Mostly on Twitter. That's sort of where I interact the most. Um, uh, may or may not have a website of some sort coming in the near future. So I'm sure if that ever gets done or finished or started, then uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be ramming that down everyone's throat. So uh, yeah, other podcasts potentially or a podcast is in the works. So again, depending on if I've got the energy to to actually sit down and record for it, but um, yeah, I'll be uh, I'll make sure I come on and plug the shit out of them if they ever come to fruition. So. But uh, yeah, mainly Twitter, but Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff. TikTok, I think I've got an account, never go on it. So if anyone's out there, if anyone's got any kids that I can they can, I can borrow so they can start running my TikTok account, then yeah, great. Send them my way. I'm a nice person, honest. Um, but yeah, that's about it. That's all that's all that's all from me. Dan, I think he's on Twitter somewhere, but you know, who cares? Yeah, just look for a what does he say? Canuck? Is it Canuck? He said. Oh, uh, um, the Canucks. Yeah, the hockey team. Oh, God, Sopranos. Fuck me, Sopranos. Yes, yeah, We've got yeah. Sopranos. Sopranos redefined. It's it's sort of having a bit of a hiatus at the moment. But um, yeah, we did we did the first two two seasons. So look, if you like Sopranos, it's it's all right. It's, it's me at half five in the morning, most episodes, half asleep, talking to Dan. So yeah, it's if you if you rewatch if you're planning on rewatching the Sopranos, then you know give it a go. The logo looks all right. I think maybe. No. Yeah, the That's logo is pretty funny. Yeah, it took me a while to think. Well, not a while, but once now I've met you both to realize that you're both meant to be the uh, you're like the psychotherapist or whatever she is. Oh yeah, Melfi. Yeah, Melfi. Yeah, and uh, Dan Machos is uh, Tony Soprano. Of course, he is. Um, <laughs> so yeah, pretty cool. But now, cheers for coming on, uh, Ben and Dan. If you listen to this, uh, he he won't listen to this, will he? He he, he doesn't want to go through this. He doesn't want to go oh, through no, that he, again. He, he, he listened to the episode up until this bit. <laughs> so when stopped. he when he signs off, that's when he will yeah he will turn off yeah because oh. I think he does like the sound of his own voice you know and annoyingly his voice does sound quite good so I can't blame him on on that front but um yeah no I, he, he listened because he, he he likes the he likes to like I feel like he likes to critique himself he likes to see where he where he maybe went wrong how he can improve um but yeah he, no he'll be turning off the last when, when he's when he's gone he, he'll be off so. Uh, oh, well. Probably for the best because I don't think I've been that that nice to him. So. Well, you know, if you listen to this, Dan, and you've got any critique notes for me or Ben, Ben won't read them, but I, but I might, you know, I might yeah, give them. Fucking, a... Yeah, he, he can fuck right off. Fucking critique <laughs> me. Oh, sorry, Dan. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You're great. You're great. Uh, but no, if if you ever fancy uh, re- uh, reviewing the Star Wars films, Dan, you know where I am. But, I mean, I don't know. He's only reviewed me once. He probably, he's probably, yeah, uh, the jury's still out, probably. But oh, we've uh, got, we've got face off. Uh, did I mention that in the uh, review? I can't remember if I said or not. No, no, you gonna, didn't we, not. Oh no, yes, we may, we we may be doing face off, so I may get you on film vloggers and do a Nicolas Cage film. So maybe face off, maybe something else. But so watch out for that. That might be might be getting churned out in the next couple of weeks. So that should be pretty good. Yeah, win. Love love me a bit of Nicolas Cage. I can't wait to see his new one. This. Uh, What's it called? They're like the something of genius or something like that one that. Ugh. Oh, oh, um, oh, Christ. Oh, God's sake, yep. man. The unbearable. Weight, oh, God. Weight, the unbearable weight of incredible genius or something. Talent. Talent. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Christ. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's better. I mean, apparently it's doing, it's done really well. Yeah. I've, so. I've heard good things. Yeah. I've heard people who have seen it. Some of the, um, some of the cage podcasts have, have mm-hmm. seen it at screening. So. No, yeah, naturally, I, I'm, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna enjoy it. But no, I've, I've, it seems like it's, it's doing well from people who aren't into, who, you know, aren't super cage fans. So, yeah, I think that those sort of films are always quite fun, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. He's, he's not a guy who takes himself too seriously. No. So 
Yeah, but uh, cheers, that uh, fucking hell. Cheers, fucking what? Dad. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Dan Mackle's on the mind. Oh God, no, no, no. Um, uh, oh, God, that's proper knocked me off my right. Thank you, Ben. Uh, I hope I haven't insulted you by thinking you were Dan. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to say that. Uh, but uh, no, cheers. For, I'm not uh, bald yet. I'm not. <laughs> bald. I'm getting there, but I'm not fucking bald yet. I love how you read. You read what I was thinking. I didn't. Yeah, I thought I'm not. I've already. I've already told Dan that. Um, because I always make you know references to him being bald so i've already said that when i do eventually go bald because i'm sure i will that he, he is not allowed to make any reference to my baldness uh, i yeah. think i think that's reasonable yeah hopefully he doesn't uh, listen to this and smack me one um but yeah but yeah uh thank you for coming on ben i really appreciate it um, no pleasure you can find review yourself um on any well, pretty much all, all you know, the Instagram, the, the fit, oh, the I sound like Fiona. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on um, Twitter. Um, yeah, if you like this podcast, recommend it to somebody. If you don't like it, recommend it to somebody you don't like. Either way, it's fine by me. Uh, but yeah, thanks, Ben. Thank you, Dan, uh, wherever you may be. And uh, yeah, thanks to everybody for listening. Uh, I was about cheers. to do an impression there, but I, I, no. I oh, go on, no, you might as well. Go on. No, I can't, I can't do one. You did one earlier. No, he's on. not. He's not. He's not worth my impression. It's not worth my impression. It, you did one earlier on. Did I? <laughs> yeah. What was my impression? Hey man, it's 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 just no, very. No, it's it, was very... Some, it was something along, no? along the lines of. Um, oh, I've heard it. Uh, you said like he always does this. He comes on and it's like, "Hello, can you hear me? My microphone's not working." It's something like that. You did. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh oh yeah. No, we didn't record that, did we? At the start. No. Okay. No, we did. I've kept it in. <laughs> It's oh, have you kept it in? Okay, yeah. oh, there you go. Then we'll, we'll look forward to that then. Enjoy that. But again, hopefully everybody else will enjoy it. Cheers, everyone. Um, um.